Hello guys, it is Press Any Button once again. Good morning, good day, and good evening. We are back with another Unity tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're going to be going over something that I just learned a while ago. I just about learned how to implement into our game. And that is the concept of object pooling. Now, if you're anything like me, you're probably wondering, what is that? That sounds, uh, sounds pretty interesting. He, he seems pretty hyped about it. But what could all the hype be about? So pretty much object pooling is imagine you're in a nerf war and and you know you shoot your bullets, yeah, your magazine's empty. What do you do once your magazine's empty? You don't go back to the nerf factory and like get new bullets, do you? You just pick them up and like put them back in the magazine, don't you? Same applies to like paintball and stuff, even though I know you're not meant to do that. That kind of stuff. So with the help of some tutorials that were recommended by a wonderful Reddit user. I hope he hope he or she doesn't mind a shout out uh, by the name of Evil Lord Fluffy. I've been able to finagle a way that we can implement object pooling into our game. And just so we're all clear on things, object pooling is reusing assets. So we're going to be reusing our bullets over and over again instead of shooting a bullet, destroying it creating a new one, shooting a bullet, destroying it, creating a new one, because that is not as efficient as we could um, make it. Now, I just want to preface this video. It has taken me quite a bit to get to the stage that I have uh, gotten to, and it's going to be kind of difficult for me to explain every single detail. So I've got the code up in Mono Develop, and we're just going to go over that really quickly. Well. Uh, in, in simple ways. I'm just going to leave it on the screen and explain what each individual thing does. Right now let me just demo it for you. So I'm just demoing what our object pooling is doing for us. If you just look to the right in the hierarchy you can see that we've got all these um, you know shots being generated but they're really consistent. This bar is not getting any like um, shorter or longer or anything and that's because they're, they're all on a timer and they're all repeating. So we're using the same exact bullets over and over again, which is going to be way more efficient than other things. Now, to do this, I have used the kill box script that we made before. Remember our little cube with the uh, boundary? Yeah, I, I completely destroyed that, so I'm going to have to go back and fix that because I'm not sure if this is a method that I'm going to stick to because I have found it hard enough trying to figure out how to get the code into our game as it is. So I'll probably just keep using the boring old, well, I'll probably just keep using the bad instantiate method, but you know, once I grind up some skills, hopefully we can fix that. So let's go to the code and talk about what I've done here. Okay, so the first thing you want to do, you probably don't want to get rid of your kill box code, which is the code for the boundary for the bullets. So what you want to do is just create a new script and we've gone over that uh, a lot of times. And once you've got your new scripts, it's very simple, we're just looking at it right here. And we've got some pretty basic things right here. So pretty much we've got this line with the function invoking it. And this means that our bullets are going to get destroyed, uh, you know, quotation marks, in two seconds. Now we don't actually want to destroy our bullet. So, instead of actually completely destroying them like we did with our kill box, what we do is we deactivate them. So if set active was true, then that would mean that the bullets would be active. But seeing that it's false now, once we destroy an object, that just means it's deactivated. And then when we want to reactivate it, we just cancel invoke. Now, if you just want to take a look at that code, uh, I'll leave it on the screen. And this is the first thing that you're going to want to do. Let me go back to the editor to show you where you're going to want to put it. So you want to attach the script to your shots that you have right here um, that the player is actually emitting and that's going to allow you to make use of that script. Now let's go back to Mono Develop and see what else I've done. Okay, so here I've gone to the player bullet script. Now I'm kind of doing things in an awkward order because we're actually meant to make this big uh, I don't know, sleuth of code right here. But let's just take a look at the simple stuff first. So you remember how we had a uh, fire rate and 
this line was actually instantiate right here as you can see I'm just going over with my cursor well I highlighted instantiate deleted that and put in this code instead which is uh, this stuff right here All right so that's just right under next fire the immediate line right under it and I just inserted this code which is pretty much saying the bullet's going to come from our position and who, who's this script attached to? Our player. Now, one thing from the tutorial that I was watching uh, that I realized I should have, I could have done maybe before, was make the firing script separate to the player movement script. This would be an advantage because... I'd be able to use the shooting scripts for my nemesis, but because I've got it attached, I've, I've got all this other stuff attached to it, I couldn't really be bothered. I, I mean, I could probably just make a new script, delete some stuff, move it around, and then attach it to the nemesis. But, yeah, you're just going to want to, if you're thinking of using it for your nemesis, if you're thinking of generating some object pooling for that, you're going to want to remove all the stuff about movement and all that stuff so that's pretty much everything outside uh, here just delete that um, and a uh, couple of things up here but what this is saying is it's just going to use our position the position of our player to fire the bullets I'm not quite sure about this line but I know it's important so just make sure you include everything here Okay, now we have the behemoth. This is the one that just ate my weekend. So, this script is pretty much control. This is the big daddy of our object pooling. This is where everything happens. Here, we just referenced this script so we could use it and, you know, we positioned it. We positioned, like, the reference stuff. But this is the absolute monstrosity. So, let's see how I can explain this. So these are our, this is the number of pulled objects that we're going to have. We've got 20 right now. Now I want to reiterate, pulled objects means that you're reusing them. So we've got 20 reused objects, right, that they're going to deactivate in two seconds and then come back. Now if our bullets were moving at like speed 5 or something, and they were only travelling to a short range, you know, like halfway across our scene, we'd have an issue. So we put a public ball, which is growth. Now what growth does is, is it compensates for uh, the amount that we've missed. Now the guy that I'm going to link in the description, he's an actual Unity dude. So yeah, of course. And he's got a really good tutorial about all of this object pulling stuff. But I'm just going to explain it from my perspective a little bit. So this compensates. This is where we set it. We can also set it. You see it's a, it's a public public in right here so we can set that in the editor and so we've just got a bunch of syntax that really gave me an awesome time and I can't do this code justice by me trying to explain what's going on here so that's why I just talked about the public classes but this code arranges our pool it arranges the positioning of things it makes it so that we can use it for a range of things so long as we don't just attach it to our movement as I did because we're using ju yeah just make a note of this right using system dot collections dot generic because I feel like that's that might be something that people miss out when they're just watching this tutorial so that is the code that I've been working into this project just today and just messing around with that to see what I could come up with Unfortunately, I haven't been able to get it to work for the Nemesis, so I'm going to have to go back to instantiate and stuff so I can continue with some other things. But I'm sure you guys watching this probably have the expertise required to figure out what's going on with this code. Let's return to Unity. So we just looked at the player bullet script, and we don't have to actually change the position of that. We can keep it right where it is. Um... And you see here I've got my transformation set as none. It doesn't actually make a difference because it just wants to, as we can see, it just wants to fire from inside the player because I, because of that one line of code that I was talking about earlier. 
So our player bullet is attached to our player object still, so no worrying about that. And our bullet pull is a empty game object that I've just left in the scene. I mean, just like the lighting, I reckon you could just pull it up away and that would be pretty good. And I've attached the script to that. And what you want to do is you want to take the shots that you're using, right, and check this. Just just check that box uh, growth. I'm not sure if I've got it working right now, but you want to take the shots that are coming from your player right here. For me, it's shots too. And you want to put them in object for pull because those are going to be the shots that are getting pulled. Uh, so there's going to be 20 of those in the scene. And if we just want to take another look at it, let's just see how things are going. Yeah, that's pretty good. Anyway guys, that has been it for today. That has been another Unity Bullets tutorial. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, you know, leave a like, comment, subscribe, whatever you want to do. Mess around with Unity a little bit. Maybe send some feedback to me on how I could better implement this into the game. Just fiddle around with things and uh, have a lot of fun with this because we are starting to get to the end of our bullets tutorial. I will tell you what we are going to be doing next. Uh, in the next lesson, we're going to be making, we're going to be figuring out how we destroy our player object when they get hit, and we're going to be figuring out how we're going to generate a life bar for our nemesis object, which is going to be exciting because that means we've actually got a video game instead of like, I don't know, instead of like an arrow key laser show. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. This has been Press Any Button and I will be back some other time.